So welcome everybody to the Toronto Waste Strategy webinar on diversion opportunities for businesses and home renovators. Thanks everybody for joining us on this afternoon and it's great to have all of the participants. We can see that there's about 23 participants on the call. Um, we do have the opportunity to see your chat, so if there's something that you need to tell us, make sure that you send us a quick chat to let us know. Um, this is the third of the presentations that have gone on on the, the Draft Toronto Waste Strategy. We had an overview presentation. We had a second presentation on um, we had a second presentation on three R's, and we're having this presentation today on diversion opportunities for businesses and home renovators. So my name is Carla Coley, and I'm part of the consultant team, and I'll be facilitating this session today. We also have presenters. We have Annette Sinewick from the City of Toronto, who will be presenting part of the strategy. Annette is, is uh, from the Solid Waste Services Division and is looking after the strategy, project managing it from her end. And we have Maria Kelleher, who is uh, also part of the strategy team. She's one of the consultants, and she will be presenting on uh, much, for much of the presentation today. So what we have today is a presentation that is about half an hour. And um, throughout the presentation, if you have questions that you think of as you go that you want to chat to us, um, we will try and accommodate those as we go through, or we will hold them till the end. We have about a half an, uh, sorry, an hour, I believe, at the end of the presentation for questions and answers. And at that time, I will, I will remind you of the question and answer um, uh, instructions, but at that time, you'll be able to provide your questions via chat or online, or sorry, or on phone. So the agenda for today is an overview of the draft waste strategy with a focus on the recommendations for businesses and home renovators. As noted, the presentation is about half an hour long and it will cover the topics of overview of the waste strategy, a brief overview of the strategy, um, an overview of the ICNI recommendations, um, an overview of the construction uh, renovation and demolition recommendations, an overview of the draft waste strategy outcomes and benefits, and an overview of the proposed implementation timeline. And as noted, that is about half an hour and then following that there'll be an hour for questions and responses. At this time, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Annette Sinowick, who's going to speak to the draft waste strategy overview. Annette. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So why do we need a waste strategy? Um, we started the waste strategy in 2013. Really what uh, the city was looking at was updating a new master plan for the reduction and, uh, of waste going to landfill. Uh, at the time, our projections showed that the Green Lane landfill had a capacity or a lifespan of about 2029. That was kind of a sense of urgency in, in getting a new project uh, moving along. So really what you see in this draft waste strategy are six core ideas. So obviously um, the biggest one there is preserving the life of our asset, uh, the Green Lane Landfill, which is close, uh, located near London, Ontario. Uh, we also focused a lot on uh, reduce, reuse and recycle. So you'll see throughout the draft waste strategy a number of options specifically related to waste reduction. So we have a textile uh, reduction strategy proposed as well as a food waste strategy and some more of those details are found online. Um, we also wanted to uh, recognize that there is uh, opportunity to do better in the system that we currently have. So uh, single family waste audits recently showed that 66% of the material left in uh, the garbage bin uh, from single family homes in Toronto uh, could have been diverted through our existing program. So we really realized that there's an opportunity to do better. Um, we also wanted to uh, minimize the need for new infrastructure. So really what that means is that uh, Toronto is a rate based structure and the more components to the system or more, more infrastructure that we need to fund, the, there's the potential for increased costs to the customer base. So we really wanted to use what we have Another thing that uh, we're underscoring here in the waste strategy is that Toronto already has a really uh, world-class system. We were one of the first major uh, urban municipalities to have a citywide green bin program at both curbside and in our multifamily apartments and condos. Um, so we're kind of building upon that. 
Also through public consultation throughout the development of the strategy, it was a very strong message coming back to us that collaboration with a lot of the grassroots organizations and not-for-profits that are doing similar work to the City of Toronto was really a, a linchpin in, in, in making this strategy a success. Uh, another main component that we needed to look at is making sure that we had the ability to be flexible in the waste strategy going forward. So as many of you know, uh, the province has put forward Bill 151, the Waste Free Ontario Act. Uh, depending on the regulations and how they're uh, going to be presented in the future, uh, that has the potential to change how our integrated waste management system currently works. So another couple of key points about the strategy is that not only is this important to the Solid Waste Management Service Division and staff, but it's also a key strategic action item for members of council as it not only uh, expands and extends the life of our largest asset, the Green Lane Landfill, but it also contributes to uh, greenhouse gas reduction the more that we reduce waste. Uh, so what we really want is this plan to be a high-level decision-making document for the next 30 to 50 years. Next slide. Uh, there's been quite a process for the last couple of years to get where we're at. Um, and so what you're seeing here on the slide is the number of kind of high-level steps that we've taken in order to get to where we are today, which is basically looking at a draft waste strategy, consulting one last time with members of the public and key stakeholders uh, to see if we've got it right. And then we'll be going and presenting the final waste strategy to members of Public Works and Council later on uh, in June and July. So one of the things that was approved through Council recently um, in September, October of 2015 was uh, the vision for our final strategy and what you're seeing in that first paragraph is really uh, supporting you know, investment back into the economy, so looking at a circular economy, again, this is a strong message that we heard through public consultation. The second part of that vision really uh, is meant to support uh, the community relationships and collaboration that we want to have through uh, implementation of the final strategy. I, We've created this diagram uh, to help in the discussion of how we've broken down some of the options and system components in, uh, in creating the final waste strategy. So just starting at the top there is basically when we have this integrated waste management system in the City of Toronto, what we want to do is we want to make sure that there's promotion and education available so that we are able to communicate how to use the programs and services that we have. Next, uh, we have residents and we have businesses and other customers that are generating or reducing waste, so then that waste is created. And then basically what we do in our system is we have to collect it and drop it off somewhere, so that waste is transported. Next, at the transfer station level, we consolidate that waste and we take it to one of the streams, whether it be residual or recycling or some other type of processing. The next big component is the recycling or management of that waste, sorting it into categories uh, for diversion or not. And basically, going through that whole system, each one of those, we looked at that system and we recognized, is there an opportunity, a gap, or a challenge that we needed to address over the planning period? So that's uh, from identifying those gaps, challenges, and opportunities, we came up with a list of options. Uh, today we're talking about construction, renovation, demolition waste, but uh, what you'll see in the uh, larger draft strategy is a number of ways that we're addressing all of those gaps, challenges, and opportunities. I, I mentioned that we've been uh, you know, listening to a number of uh, voices and input and stakeholders in this process. We've tried to be uh, very inclusive and transparent. So we've had a number of surveys that have gone out for, for so far to date, with including the one that's open right now. Uh, finishing the third one, we had over uh, 2,200 responses so far. Uh, we've also had 19 meetings with a special stakeholder advisory group, so that included uh, some organizations like Toronto Community Housing, Recycling Council of Ontario, Toronto Environmental Alliance, school boards, University of Guelph, University of Toronto, uh, Ontario Waste Management Association, Retail Council of Canada, and another, a number of other organizations. They've really been our sounding board. Uh, on a more detailed level throughout the process, so we wanted to always thank them for their input. We've also held a number of key stakeholder meetings and made all of our um, public consultation events open to members of the public or key stakeholders. 
Uh, we've also had uh, you know, your regular social media and, and website updates uh, with all of the project information. We've held a number of open houses and community events. We also asked uh, for information specifically from vendors in the industry that could have solutions to some of our gaps, challenges, and opportunities, and that's provided a lot of good technical detail into the process. We've released a number of project updates, and we've had some other innovative outreach kind of um, tactics that we've been using. So we had the Wasted Speaker Series, which were panel events um, organized by uh, public consultation. We had different community uh, organizations speak on those panels. We've also had um, a waste app competition with a high school students. Recently, we just engaged with University of Toronto engineering students to uh, come up with you know, uh, tech uh, solutions for uh, solid waste and waste reduction. And we also had film screenings to engage people uh, on, on the strategy as well. So it's been a pretty fun process along the way, and we're happy to say that there's been a lot of uh, people coming out to our events, and thank you for coming. Oh, hi. So um, this is Maria Kelleher. I'm a member of the project team, and I'm going to talk to you today about um, the elements of the strategy that involve what we call IC&I waste and CRD waste. And IC&I waste is the short form for non-residential waste that comes from industrial, commercial, and institutional uh, sources, which are really business institutions like hospitals, schools, universities, um, and commercial uh, sources like uh, retail um, and restaurant. And construction, renovation, and demolition waste um, includes uh, CRD waste from large projects, but also from home renovators. And so um, in Ontario right now, we have a number of provincial regulations that already target th this non-residential waste. So the province of Ontario already has regulations to manage this waste. Um, they're referred to as the three R's regulations. Uh, three of them uh, were uh, brought out actually in 1994. Uh, the first of those was uh, Reg 10294, which requires um, businesses of a certain size to do waste audits and waste reduction work plans. Um, and these um, uh, regulations apply to construction and demolition waste projects beyond a certain size and also larger commercial um, establishments, um, again, always above a threshold, which means it's only the larger businesses that have to do the waste audit and waste reduction plans. And so uh, we also have Reg 10394, uh, which requires larger waste generators in the province um, of ICNI and I and C&D waste to have recycling programs, which is source separation programs for particularly materials at their place of business. It applies to mostly the same people that are captured by the uh, other regulation that I spoke about. Um, but this, um, in addition to businesses, this particular regulation also targets multi-residential uh, buildings that have more than six units in them, but it actually targets um, the owner of the building, not the municipality in which the building is. Um, and we also have Reg 10494, which is called the Packaging Audit Reg, um, and that applies to specific businesses that handle a large amount of packing, packaging. Um, and uh, those particular businesses are supposed to put packaging audits together and then packaging uh, reduction work plans. Um, so if we look at where we are today, those regs have been in place for 20 years, and I'll come back to them because I suppose one of the big issues with those regs is that they were never really enforced. So. Most people in the business don't actually know they exist and have forgotten about them. But the government has um, very recently, last November, um, issued a draft Waste Free Ontario Act and a draft strategy uh, to change the way waste is managed in Ontario. And so these two documents outline a new direction for waste management in Ontario. The Act, um, the Waste Free Ontario Act, focuses on extended producer responsibility as a guiding principle, actually individual producer responsibility where producers are responsible for managing the products and packaging that they put into the Ontario marketplace. 
And this, this new, the regulations that will come out under this new act could impact on how the city manages waste in the future. In fact, I, I'd go so far as to say it definitely will. We just don't really have all the details yet. Um, and it may impact on the city's future plans for managing ICI and CND, uh, CRD waste. Next slide. So the, um, within the Act, within the Draft Waste Free Ontario Act, which actually went through second reading on Tuesday of this week um, and is going to committee mid-April, and we are anticipating that if all goes according to plan, the Act might actually be in place by the end of May of 2016, so quite soon. Um, but within the Act, there is a requirement for the province to have a waste strategy and the strategy actually will uh, lay out what is going to happen with waste from the ICI and the C&D sector. And specific things that are in the strategy that specifically target these waste streams, there's a, a requirement for increased data collection and tracking. Um, the province doesn't have good data right now. Um, there's a requirement to review the existing 3Rs regulations, and actually the review of those regulations is already underway. And there is a comment that um, there may be service provider standards in the province, um, which uh, would be a very interesting way to go um, in that it, they could, depending on what happens, mandate that all service providers um, provide recycling, for instance, if they provide, land, if they provide garbage service. Um, and the, uh, the strategy also mentions landfill bans specifically on organic materials which would impact on, um, say, restaurants, food service providers in the ICI sector. Um, but the landfill, the ministry has specifically mentioned a landfill ban on, on uh, cardboard also. So it may have many materials in the landfill ban, but all of that will become clear over time. So um, early on in the project, a number of gaps, challenges, and opportunities were identified for the two types of non-residential waste that we've looked at, the first from the ICI sector and the other from the construction renovation de demolition sector. Um, and the backdrop to this is that there are regs in place, but there's limited enforcement of the provincial regs for either of these sectors. Um, most of the non-residential waste is managed by the private sector, not by the city itself. Um, there's little information available on the amount of ICI waste generated or diverted, and in fact, the province has commented on this in their strategy that better information is required and that they will be putting in place better recording mechanisms to get better information. Um, and there is difficulty in finding viable markets for some um, construction demolition waste materials, which limit uh, the opportunities to really divert this material. So the objectives of the strategy for ICI waste and, and CRD waste is to provide flexibility and accessibility to accommodate the changing waste streams, uh, to allow the city to enhance waste diversion in these sectors for waste materials um, which are managed by the private sector at this point in time, but um, for the city to maybe put policies in place that encourage diversion. Uh, to promote, encourage, and facilitate diversion of construction demolition waste where markets are available uh, to complement existing and future regulations. And as I go through our, um, the elements of the strategy, you'll hear me say in a few cases, it really depends on what the future regulations under the Act look like. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we've said after five years, it's time to review where these regulations under the Act are because they may cover a lot of this uh, territory already. Um, another objective is to provide disposal and diversion opportunities for small businesses and home renovation waste and to address residential renovation waste and provide customers with small loads um, to have access to diversion opportunities, which they don't really have for all of the materials right now. So looking at the recommendations in the strategy, um, the first recommendation is well, let me back up and just say, what, what does the city currently do? What is their current role in managing ICI waste? Um, first off, most businesses, I believe there's about 100,000 businesses in the city, most of these receive waste management service from private sector haulers. 
Um, but the city provides waste management services to uh, some small businesses that meet particular eligibility requirements and are on existing city collection routes, and that's about 19,000 um, businesses, or somewhere between 14 and 19,000 businesses. Um, the collection of ICI waste at each stop is financed through the waste utility, um, and eligible commercial establishments pay for garbage collection and disposal through the yellow bag program. And you probably see the yellow bags along the streets, uh, mostly at night, from small businesses. Um, and the cost of the yellow bag program includes green bin, organics, and blue bin recycling collection. So in order to get your yellow bag picked up in Toronto, you simply have to divert. You have to recycle, uh, which is a great uh, strategy. Uh, and then for um, businesses who want to bring waste into city transfer stations, they can do that at a tipping fee. And uh, for businesses who want to bring um, waste to the Green Lane landfill, they can also do that and pay a tipping fee. So that's the way things are today. And so the first recommendation in the strategy is to expand the City of Toronto's share of the ICI waste management market to provide diversion opportunities to more commercial businesses. This, oper this um, recommendation is really targeted at small businesses that for various reasons right now don't meet the uh, city eligibility criteria and they have asked through the consultation that they get the service. So the first recommendation is that the city would really look at what would be involved, who would be interested. Um, so the city would explore the feasibility of expanding the number of co uh, commercial businesses that are eligible. Uh, for city collection through the yellow bag program, but it would not include even medium sized but definitely larger businesses, institutions, or industries. They're already well serviced by the private sector callers. Um, and small businesses, the big benefit here is that small businesses currently on the yellow bag program are required to participate in green bin organics and blue bin recycling, and any new businesses that join would have to divert waste. So one of the comments that was received through the consultation was that small businesses don't often have cost-efficient options to divert, and this would provide them with an option to divert waste. So the second recommendation is that the city would explore um, a number of policies and instruments that could be used to increase waste diversion by making ICI waste diversion mandatory in some way if you are a business that is located within the city. So right now all the businesses get garbage collection, but there could be a bylaw or some other instrument that would make um, recycling, maybe even Greenman uh, collection uh, mandatory as a service provision requirement. Um, Another option would be to join forces with the province and enforce regs that are on the books now or that may be coming on the books in the next few years. Um, so as I mentioned before, new regulations are expected in the next few years under the Waste Free Ontario Act, um, and that they are likely to have a very big impact on how waste is managed throughout the province, but we don't have the details yet, so we're only guessing as to what might be in there. So benefits of the strategy and how it would be implemented, the big benefit would be to increase uh, diversion, extending the life of the Green Lane landfill, um, increase diversion from all city-serviced ICI establishments, um, and again, as I've said, it may be implemented once the regulations under the proposed new act are better understood. Moving on to the C and D or CRD recommendations, um, currently looking at what the city does today, uh, large amounts of construction waste are managed by the private sector outside of the city system now. So the city doesn't handle large amounts of construction waste. Um, so the city provides limited diversion of C or D uh, waste at city transfer stations and they provide opportunities to divert materials once a market has been found for these materials. So a lot of the CRD waste management managed by the city is from yard and home renovations um, and is subject to tipping fees. Um, and smaller quantities, one of the barriers in the city is that smaller quantities of waste are not readily accepted by private tra sector transfer stations who 
look after larger amounts, but they don't really want small people with small amounts coming in. So the first recommendation of the strategy is to put in place depots um, where people could drop off smaller amounts of CRD waste. So the city could establish dedicated uh, construction demolition waste drop-off bins at each transfer station for, for materials for which markets really are available. So that might include clean wood, concrete, plastic piping, metal items, some ceramics, and asphalt shingles. Um, where you would have a material like asphalt shingles with some nails in it that the markets don't really want, um, those materials would need to be sent to a processing facility to, um, to upgrade them to a point where markets would actually buy them. And um, the city would also investigate the feasibility of developing policies, legislation, and economic incentives to increase the diversion of CRD waste. So these could be any one of a number of different uh, bylaws or policies or even just charging higher tip fees for um, loads of construction waste that haven't been source separated. The, um, the second uh, recommendation is around a, a disposal ban on construction materials. Um, this is also being talked about by the province, but we don't know when it will happen, if it will happen. So on the assumption that it's not anytime soon, uh, the city could look at a phased-in disposal ban for materials that have established markets, and that disposal ban would happen at the transfer stations. Um, it would occur in conjunction with providing people with options on what to do with these materials so that they could drop off the materials at the depots, but they wouldn't be allowed to uh, put the materials in the garbage. Um, the city in this case would work with other GTA municipalities and other key stakeholders to figure out which are the best materials to be banned and to encourage similar bans across the GTA so that if Toronto bans something, everyone just doesn't go to Peel or Durham or York with the material. They, um, there's a sort of a level playing field across the, the GTA. And as I mentioned before, uh, this would be considered once it's clearer what the future uh, regs in Ontario are going to, to, to dish up to us. So the outcomes of the strategy, um, the benefits of, of the strategy are increased diversion of CRD waste from the Greenway landfill. It may generate pulling materials out of the construction demolition waste stream into recycling industries may create some local jobs. Um, having a good supply of these materials would boost existing recycling markets and might uh, encourage the development of new markets for these materials. It provides an opportunity for the city to take a leadership role um, in developing diversion policies and programs targeting these materials in particular. Annette mentioned earlier that Toronto really is a leader in North America as a city in terms of having been an early adopter of the Green Bin program and uh, everywhere you go, conferences around the world, people look up to Toronto as being a real leader, so this is another opportunity to be a leader. Um, and it would provide convenient low-cost diversion options for home renovators and yard renovation waste, um, which uh, homeowners, I'm sure, would be happy to participate in. Looking at our implementation timeline, um, the, the C&D components of the, pl of the strategy really are in the planning phase for the early years of the strategy. So. Um, we have uh, promotion and education on the top here, uh, which will occur throughout the waste strategy implementation. We have a five-year review of the strategy, uh, which provides flexibility to address future changes, both in the kinds of materials that are being dealt with and also in terms of addressing where the legislation is. Um, next slide. And this shows the implementation roadmap. For those of you who have been at a few of the other consultations, you've seen this already. We've got a whole number of components of the strategy, and this chart just shows you where we could see the ICI components fitting in, so the planning of the two orange ICI components at the top and bottom of this bar would begin in 2018. 
and then the disposal bans would be later because if the province comes in with um, uh, legislation on disposal bans, there may not be a need for the city to do very much because it will already have been mandated. So um, I will hand back to uh, Carla to tell us what happens next here. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, both Annette and Maria. Um, we do definitely want your input on the strategy, and we'll get to questions in just a moment, but just for your information, there is a number or all of the information that is from tonight or today's presentation as well as past presentations and the panels from the overview launch event are all on the city's website. There is one more presentation on the 12th, which is a combination of an in-person and um, online presentation, Waste Recovery and Residual, How to Handle the Remaining Materials, and that's August 12th, next week. And there, or April 12th, <laughs> April 12th. And there is also the survey that is online that we're hoping everyone can participate in. It will be open until the 27th of April, and that's the, uh, one of the primary ways to get people's feedback on the draft strategy. You can also contact the city at the telephone number and email below at any point in time to provide your input in other ways. So from the perspective of the next step, in June of this year, the final waste strategy will be presented to Public Works and the Infrastructure Committee, taking into consideration the input that we receive through this phase of consultation. In July of 2016, the final waste strategy will be presented to City Council for approval. And then 2016 onwards will be essentially the implementation plan that Maria um, spoke to and city staff will work with City of Toronto residents, businesses, stakeholders, agencies and other community representatives to implement the approved waste strategy. So thank you everybody for listening to the presentation. Don't forget to visit the website. The website is on, as shown on the on screen there. There's also an opportunity to tweet your comments to the hashtag also shown on the screen. 